place next to an abandoned fire tower in the swamp on October 30, 1969. In 1952, six-year-old Kia watches her mother leave their shack in the marsh. Before long, her siblings, including her beloved 12-year-old brother Jody, depart too, leaving Kia alone with Pa, a drunken, disabled World War II vet prone to violent rages. Pa gives Kia a dollar a week for food. In town, older boys, including Chase Andrews, pass her on their bikes. Kia spends most of her time in the marsh with the gulls. Mrs. Culpepper, a truant officer, takes Kia to school, where she is humiliated and never returns. Over the years, townspeople call her Dirty, the Marsh Girl, Missing Link, and Marsh Trash. Kia takes Pa's fishing boat exploring. When she gets lost, one of Jody's friends, Tate Walker, guides her back to her channel. Tate lives alone in town with his dad, Scupper, a fisherman. For a while, Kia and Pa fish together and enjoy each other's company. Pa introduces Kia to Jumpin, an older black man who sells gas and supplies. Kia's mother sends a letter, but Pa burns it and returns to drinking. Pa finally disappears when Kia is 10 years old. Kia supports herself selling mussels to Jumpin, whose wife Mabel collects clothes for Kia from Colored Town. Kia continues watching Tate as well as Chase and his friends. When she is 14 years old, Kia finds a series of special feathers left in a tree stump in the marsh. One day, she leaves a special feather in return. After that, Tate appears at the stump and offers to teach her to read. Tate and Kia begin to meet at a secret cabin in the marsh where he teaches her to read. As Kia matures, Tate brings her a biology textbook and Mabel gives her a bra. One day, Tate finds Kia sick on Point Beach. He explains to her that she is having her period. Kia and Tate continue their lessons and she invites him inside her shack and shows him her collection of natural objects. One day, Tate kisses Kia and they begin a romantic relationship. Their desire grows, but they avoid having sex. Tate leaves early for college and tells Kia he will visit on the 4th of July. However, he doesn't return. Kia, devastated, returns to studying nature. When Kia is 19 years old, Chase catches her eye on Point Beach. He is a popular, good-looking, confident, former high school quarterback. Chase approaches Kia on Jumpin's Wharf and invites her on a picnic. At the picnic, Chase gives Kia a rare scallop shell. He is sexually aggressive and she runs away. When Kia and Chase meet ten days later, he apologizes and takes her to see the abandoned fire tower. Kia gives Chase a necklace made from the scallop shell. Chase says he won't approach her sexually unless she wants him to. Kia gets closer to Chase. Tate, who is home from college, wants to apologize to Kia, but sees her kissing Chase and turns away. Chase starts talking about marriage and invites Kia on an overnight trip. She joins him and they have unsatisfying sex in a cheap motel room. Still, their relationship continues. However, Chase won't introduce Kia to his parents or friends and disappears for a week over Christmas. Tate comes to the lagoon to warn Kia that Chase is seeing other women, but she throws rocks at him. Still, she invites him into the shack and he offers to find a publisher for a book of her nature paintings. Kia sees the engagement announcement in the newspaper for Chase and Pearl, a girl she recognizes from Point Beach. She recites poems by Amanda Hamilton, who publishes in the local newspaper, to soothe herself. She determines to live her life alone. A year later, Kia receives a copy of her first book. She uses the advance money to improve and modernize the shack. She gives Tate a copy of her book. Kia's brother Jody visits the shack. He tells her that Ma has died and promises to keep in touch. He encourages her to reconcile with Tate. In August of 1969, Chase sneaks up on Kia on a remote beach, attacks, and tries to rape her. She fights him off and sees two fishermen watching from their boat as she leaves. Tate and Jumpin see her bruises, but she begs them not to tell anyone. Chase continues to come to her shack, but she hides from him. Kia gets a letter from her publisher, Robert Foster, to meet him in Greenville. 
She finds out from Tate how to buy a bus ticket and goes to meet him on October 28, returning on October 30, the day Chase's body is found. Sheriff Ed Jackson and his deputy Joe Perdue investigate Chase's death. No footprints or fingerprints are found at the scene. They think Chase was pushed through an open gate and the murderer covered up the scene. Almost immediately, everyone in town suspects the Marsh girl. Over time, Joe and Ed's main clue consists of red wool fibers on Chase's jacket. Also, Chase's mother Patty Love tells them Chase was wearing the shell necklace when he left her house that night, but it was not found at the scene. A shrimper, Hal Miller, tells them he saw Kia's boat headed toward the fire tower the night Chase died. However, Tate and Jumpin and townspeople who saw her get on and off the bus to Greenville give Kia an alibi. A fisherman, Rodney Horn, who heard Kia yelling and saw her leaving after Chase attacked her, heard her say she would kill Chase if he bothered her again. Joe and Ed find a red wool hat in Kia's shack that Tate gave her and that matches the fibers on Chase's coat. With this information, they arrest Kia for murder. Kia spends two months in jail awaiting trial. A lawyer, Tom Milton, volunteers to defend her. A kind guard at the prison, Jacob, lets the cat, Sunday Justice, into her cell for company. Tate, Jumpin, and Mabel sit behind Kia in court for support. They are later joined by Jody, Robert Foster, and Scupper. Prosecutor Eric Chastain calls his witnesses and Tom Milton counters their testimony. The jury learns that it would have been possible for Kia to take buses back and forth from Greenville on the night of the murder, but the timing is very tight. Tom calls defense witnesses, including Kia's publisher Robert Foster. After closing statements, everyone awaits the verdict. Kia is found not guilty. Jody takes her home, where she is delighted to see the marsh again. Kia sees Tate in his boat and is going to approach him, but the sheriff and two deputies arrive and take Tate with them. She learns that Scupper has had a stroke and died. The day after Scupper's funeral, Tate finds a feather in his boat from Kia. At the shack, they express their love for each other and Tate moves in with her. Over the years, Jumpin' dies, and Jody and his wife and children visit the shack. Tate works at the nearby lab and Kia writes seven more books. One day, Tate finds Kia in her boat, dead of a heart attack at age 64. On her tombstone, he inscribes, The Marsh Girl. Many townspeople come to Kia's funeral on her land. That night, Tate finds two items beneath the floorboards. One is a box of poems by Amanda Hamilton, a pseudonym Kia used, including a poem describing Chase Andrews' death. Tate also finds the shell necklace Kia gave Chase. Tate burns the poems and rawhide cord and crushes the shell on the beach for the tide to take away.